can share the screen. Thank you, Mary. All right. Well, Dave, let's uh, okay. have what you have to share first. Go ahead and why don't you just go ahead and start us off and we'll go from there. Oh, it says host disable screen sharing. <laughs> yeah, can I can I share some notes? Mary? Yeah, I'm enabling it right now. Just a sec. Okay. Here we go. You should be good. Got it. Okay. Uh, I'll just share my screen. And bring up the so I, I just put I I jotted down some notes and uh, and then I found some very interesting things in this what uh, this open space plan. So uh, I thought I was very encouraged at the end of the meeting when the commissioners mm -hmm. were in favor of putting our project in the quote comprehensive parks recreation and open space plan because I found out from doing some reading that that is a, the essential first step to be considered for these RCO grants. Um, so what I wanted to know, what I wanted to learn, and Chris, maybe we can get, I think we all said in an email, maybe we can get some kind of debriefing or get some questions answered from Terry Terry. So they all gave it the thumbs up, I think, all of them. The question is, how is this formally approved and what's the timeline? Because what I found out, let me scroll down. You guys can see this, right? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> the interesting thing is, if you look at this timeline that I found on the web, um, effectively, this new CPROSP, they call it, um, was supposed to be approved in January. And the, the last one from 2016 expires in February. Now, when I go and look for this document, the only one I found was the 2016 document. Uh, so I'm guessing, and it wouldn't be surprising to anyone, I don't think, that these things probably take longer than expected. <laughs> Dave, Dave, can I interrupt for just a moment? Yeah. What, what he said was the plan was on hold. Oh, he did? Okay. Did anyone else hear that? No. Nope. Okay. Did he give a reason, uh, Lane? Not that I heard. Well, that's fortunate for us, I think, because uh, if we can get this project added to that plan, then we, I, my understanding is we are then eligible to apply for RCO grants. Um, what I don't know is, and I put that question here, um, if we didn't make it, if it's already been reviewed and approved, uh, can they add projects? Because it seems to me six years is an awful long time to go <laughs> without the ability to add new projects, right? Um, so those are some questions I had for Terry. Now, look at this, this is extremely interesting. So this is from the 2016 plan, right? And I, I just pasted these things in. Uh, I don't have to necessarily read everything, but uh, you know, they're talking about facilities, including resource-oriented activities, including fishing sites, boat access ramps, uh, and directly related to environmental and historical resources that have countywide interest to residents, which I think we addressed pretty well. Uh, this is interesting, work with other public and private agencies, particularly Porter Bellingham, which we might want to approach, uh, fish and wildlife, natural resources, parks and rec. Uh, so I guess this, this, this plan must be on a an amalgamation from all these folks. So one of the questions I had was, if we if we don't get the support of Parks and Recreation, what are our options to work with another agency to apply for these RCO grants? Because I think that's the only way we can fund this thing. Uh, so look at this stuff. These are some of the goals outlined in this plan. Waterfront access and facilities, acquire and develop additional salt and freshwater shoreline access for waterfront fishing, beach coping, wading, swimming, and other related activities. Develop a mixture of salt and freshwater non-motorized and powerboat access opportunities, especially including additional sites and improvements to existing properties on Lummi Island. We're already in this plan. So, <laughs> I mean, not the specific, and here's another one. Part of this plan was to get a boat launch for Lummi Island residents. Uh, so, so 
they put this plan together and then part of the plan is a poll, a survey to the public. Uh, and I, I didn't read this, but this is an 80 page document. I didn't read it in detail, but I scanned through it. It's a very interesting document. It gives history of Whatcom County, Bellingham, Ferndale, Blaine, everything. Uh, so I think it deserves our attention. Uh, in this poll, they talked yeah, about- Yeah, the- uh, Go ahead, go ahead, Alan. Yeah, uh, you mentioned the poll. Uh, the poll period is closed though, right now, I think. Yeah, because it's supposed to have been finalized, the whole plan. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Tim Terry, maybe Terry Terry can give us the results of that. Yeah, that would be very interesting. They, they did kind of a high level summary here. And this is interesting. They gave highest priority to conservancies and shoreline and hiking trails and lowest priorities to specialized activities like motorized boat launches, right? <laughs> um, it does say the smallest percents engage in specialty activities like motorized boats. Uh, and then it doesn't mean that these uh, activities are not provided, but rather they will need to be financed by other than countywide resources, such as user fees, donations, and other means, which is another challenge. But uh, I guess the challenge for us is if we can get this project on the plan, can we elevate the priority somehow? Yeah, and, it, and we're not talking about a boat launch. No, but I think boating activities in general, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, maybe yeah this is you're right this is specifically talking about launches but, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. i just found that, this really interesting that this stuff is already referenced in the current plan or the past plan. Uh, one of the things was to acquire a small boat launch access on lummy island to the best of my knowledge there's been no activity on that right uh, okay and then uh, i had some notes here about yeah the RCO grants require a public entity to file. I found this thing that I hadn't seen before on the RCO webpage. They actually have a recreational boating plan. And I put the link here. I think uh, we should spend some time reviewing that. But it's what I, what, <laughs> what I was encouraged here, guys, is that we're already on the radar for this project. I don't know why they weren't. I, well, OK. Many of them were receptive, but I felt until the end of the meeting that we were going to not make much progress. When I pressed Michael on trying to get funding for planning, that's when he turned to the committee and said, I think what he's saying is they want to be on this open space plan, which I had never even heard about. <laughs> so, so that was good education for us. And I think uh, that we want to find out when can we get on there formally, you know, because that's our first step towards this RCO funding process. So those are the questions I had, Chris. <laughs> uh, yeah, those are those are good. Can you uh, send the link uh, in an I'll send you, I can send you that. I'll send everybody that word document. Yeah, and, I'll, and I'll get it on to uh, okay. into the, uh, the web page, uh, team yeah. notes at least. Okay, very good. So let me share with you guys what uh, I received via text from Terry. I, I tried to copy and paste it to send some of them, but there's enough there that I gave up on that. So I thought, figured I'd just read it to you. So she says, overall, the commissioners recognize the project has merit, but has challenges. It was a good start. Mike McFarlane and Chris, I think that's how you say his name, uh, offered guidance to us and uh, these are the next three steps she outlines. One, ask John to meet with Mike. Two, uh, she will help setting up a meeting with Sap Tall Sidhu to schedule a meeting with him. And three, the commissioners will schedule an island tour. Mm -hmm. The majority of the commissioners were open to putting uh, the plan project uh, in the plan. And that is critical, she says. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. So she says the best way to schedule a meeting with SAP Tall is to send him an email uh, and then request a meeting to discuss the public doc committee concept, attach your presentation and let him know that Mike McFarlane and myself suggested that you reach out to schedule a conversation with him. And 
So that's all I've got from her so far on that. I kind of, I've been just swamped and have not been able to get back to her since that time other than say, sorry, I haven't responded. So, but there's, there's, there's some good step-by-step -step things that she suggests that we do now. So, yeah, I, I think that sounds good because, um, and it, and it makes it, to me, it makes sense um, because we have to, there has to be some funding that we can get a hold of to look in more detail of about feasibility. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I tell guys, you know, we knew from the beginning this was the chicken or the egg. If we sat around here for 10 more years trying to go with the right question, and I, I, while I agree with you totally, Greg, I don't believe we know the ask. That's why we were there. We don't, I mean, in my view, we were hoping to, to and, and again, we should have been more explicit about, we think we probably need multiple partners. Do you want to be one? <laughs> I'll agree with you. But we do know the result we're looking for. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. Honestly, I have to admit, <laughs> I still feel like we, you know, in early days, our big fear was if we don't go and talk to them, we will regret it because there's going to be something that comes out with people going, wait, 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 you're talking about this and you should not have been talking about this. So I'm not even sure, <laughs> but I think the, um, we were all brave enough to go do it anyway. Yay yeah. us. Right. That's my attitude. You know, yeah. if a bunch of other people didn't do it because it's embarrassing to stand there saying, you know, people saying, why are you here? Like, okay. Cause we're Joe Q public. You know, believe it or not, we don't have a manual to do this. <laughs> we're just, we're just. We've never done this before. We have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> so, yeah, and, we're, and official, and officially, this lot. was our this was our introduction to them. Absolutely, yeah. and I think you know, and I think the um, my attitude was you know onward and upward, right? But I agree totally, Greg. We will know next time. And I honestly am, yeah. I think we should sit down and look at the presentation and decide to, whether to move all the discussion about the partnerships and how hard this is. And these are a lot of steps, yada, yada. And then say, by the way, if we can get past those hurdles, here's what we're thinking it, it could be like. <laughs> Here are the hurdles that you have in front of you that will yes. come up. Yeah. Get yeah. in to see Satball. There'll be the email. That's a quick little sales in itself. The next, and, and when I say sales, what are we doing? We're conveying the vision, yeah. the benefit of the vision, how it benefits them. I know as being a, bungla, a bureaucrat for most of my adult life, nobody wants more work. So if you come to them and you give them a solution situation where here's the vision, here are some solutions we have, guide us, we'll provide the uh, manpower to do some of the grunt work to look it on up and put it together for you. But it has to be problem solution based on this vision of what's the outcome. And the outcome we're looking for is ingress, egress in emergency situations that also contributes to recreational benefit, uh, you know, some of the sidelines. But Here's the property that's identified that meets all of these criteria and has the least amount of uh, studies that are going to have to come on out of it in the process because most of those studies are all done and in the county's hands. So it makes it a whole lot easier for them. But when it comes time for that meeting, the first meeting will be with the gatekeepers and the gatekeepers get you in through the door to sit down with that ball. And the gatekeepers are the ones that want to hear that 20-second little clip. That's just the way they seem to be. And they will then challenge, you know, channel you on into where they're going to fit you into the schedule. Are you a priority? What level of priority? Are you a wanna? Gee, this is nice. You know, how can we do something with this, yeah, placate them and move them on off. Are you a Friday afternoon at three o'clock in the afternoon when everybody's kind of ho hum? You want to be a Tuesday through Thursday. You want to be a 10 to two in one of those windows. Those are the best windows for doing business, particularly with bureaucrats. Just experience on that level. 
Yeah. But you're right. You're right. It was a great first end because what did you get? What was the outcome? Direction. There was well, not just direction. You got opportunity from them to guide, to lead, and open the doors towards that fault. That's yeah. everything. They're yeah. talking coordination with multi agencies, not just parks and rec, but they're going to talk about also doing, oh, gee, here's public works. Oh, this may have uh, public safety issues that we can talk about. This has you know, dot, dot, dot all the way down the road. They brought those up to us in direction. So you've got all the little nuggets. You want to collect all those little nuggets, just like squirrels with acorns. So you get a lot, actually. Yeah. And if we truly get on this open space plan, I think that's that's also there. very significant, right? Uh, because I, I agree with you, Greg. I think it, it became clear to me that, uh, well, I don't want to jump the gun, but it, it sounds like, well, I didn't get the feeling that Parks and Rec alone were going to be willing to take this on. Right. That it would have to be a multi-agency kind of approach. And so <laughs> I think our opportunity, if we can speak with Satpal, is to find out which agencies would those be and who has the money? Like Port of Bellingham. Port of Bellingham, if I understand it, has a lot of money. They get tax money. I pay the Port of Bellingham a lot of money <laughs> uh, for fees. Uh, so is that an opportunity? I don't know. <laughs> like I had a meeting three years ago. Three years ago, it was a uh, election uh help me out here mary uh, meet the candidate sort of thing Port commissioners yeah the port commissioners were there and of all of the things one of the things we talked about on the sideline was the fact that lummy island didn't have a public dock and that was mentioned and brought up back then mm -hmm. so i can go back through my notes and see specifically i, I can't remember his name off the top but they were talking a little bit about that, and there's always monies that way. So, yes, okay. they're a player. There are pots out there. Yeah. I think I think uh, <clears throat> we need to look at crafting that letter, that email, as a group to make sure that it's short, concise, hits the bullet points, and gets that inner that meeting set up properly um and that we jump on that as soon as possible i agree i think one opportunity there in terms of a you know a multi uh i don't know how to say it agency approach right and and chris you brought this up some time ago well we've all talked about this um uh, if we have this recreational dot and it accommodates the passenger ferry then that eliminates a bunch of expense and work for public works, right? If, if, if they don't have to put in this temporary dock that they do today, first of all, we get more immediate response and they don't have to send the crew over here and all of that stuff. And potentially it's early enough on that, um, I know there was discussion that you mentioned that they want to provide a dock access on the new ferry terminal, uh, but only for captains, licensed captains, right? Or emergency if, personnel, yeah. Or, or emergency personnel. But if, if this recreational dock was installed, that perhaps could simplify and reduce the cost of the new ferry terminal, right? So it, there is a mutual benefit between public works and parks and rec in that respect. And maybe that's something we can emphasize to Sat Paul and, 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 and move forward to bring those agencies together. I don't know. I, I think though that the rather than hitting that in the email, right, is this the basics of why we want want to sit and talk? Because I suspect that getting in front of him directly and having an actual conversation will be very beneficial. Yeah. Like with, with Mike telling us, you know, I think it was Mike, 
uh, telling us that you know how things worked a little bit. So rather than getting to that point of suggesting that there's this synergy between yeah. the, the organizations, mm -hmm. it's more of, a, you know, here we are, we want to talk to you, this is why, and let this let him talk about how the synergies could work out. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Because there may be it's, lots of others that we're unaware of, right? Well, I have to admit, you, you mentioned, and I had not thought about it, the Washington State Parks and Recreation. Mm -hmm. That wasn't even on my radar. So I think that is um, where our naivete in assuming that they would realize how unfamiliar we were with all the potential out there. But on the other bottom line, from, from my perspective also, I realized later we referenced their, you know, 14 projects of $5 million from this um, money. And I, or I mean, from this fund, the, the voting fund. And I realized that it, it pure parks and rec personnel were only really involved with a portion of that. Hmm. And so I realized that there are other county agencies that are probably doing it, maybe doing it super well. And maybe that's one reason Terry Terry is so excited about this, because to her, it, it is a perfect opportunity for broadening their horizons, too, and helping them yeah. see and maybe build better, some better, um, some projects that they aren't on the hook for. Because you heard Mike's discussion about the Point Roberts. Yeah, that was interesting. Not, <laughs> yeah. And, and yet, you know, when he said four years, I want to say, is that all? Because I can't imagine, I'm, I'm not envisioning anything faster than six. I'm thinking eight and certainly could be 10. So I don't know if they honestly thought we were coming in here going, well, by next year, we want a new job. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the Point <laughs> Roberts project was an upgrade, right? Uh, it wasn't a yeah. new facility. But, well, uh, but, from, but he said from the beginning, Dave. He said from the beginning, it was oh, a project. You mean for, yeah, yeah. They yeah, should yeah. Not, he felt as if they really probably should not have gotten involved with. So yeah. we, we definitely have some, you're always going to have barriers you don't, you can't, cannot anticipate in the sense that someone has had an experience that you won't know <laughs> anything about. Mm -hmm. But um, I thought that was a bit of um, a heads up for us that why their initial reaction might be a reluctance and then and still willing to talk about it. But you can understand why if they've had a, uh, a, a pretty poor experience on one, they would be mm -hmm. a lot less likely to sign up for another. He did use the term unsuccessful. Didn't he say it was unsuccessful or something? I, I, I think I did write down unsuccessful. Yeah, yeah. So that was, well, he, he, he mentioned there's like 13 miles of fetch that right. um, barrels straight into where the, where the dock or the floats were constructed, I guess. And so, yeah, that's like the Strait of Georgia coming right up your mouth. Um, uh -huh, uh -huh. And, you know, and so he did, and he also did say that, you know, the idea of having the float to be able to be lifted out um, was a good idea. Yeah, that was, um, cool. That was cool. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it is, you know, like, okay, yeah, so they, they learned that the hard way mm -hmm. and, Yeah, I had some some thoughts on on our presentation. Um, I think it was good. I think I probably should not have said anything at the very beginning um, because I think what that did that put the tone into emergency and urgency um, rather than recreational and. I, I I could see that mm. the commissioner guys um, feeling that well why why aren't you talking to the fire district or public works or whoever does you know the health and safety kinds of things how does this relate to park and rec so the one takeaway that I have that's I think a big one is that we need to tailor our presentation to the audience. Like if we're going to be 
talking to public works, we need to, you know, we need to take and make a little bit different sort of a, a presentation and pitch. I think we need to tailor our pitch to, to the audience. I think that, and because as I listen to the presentation go on after, after that commissioner drove away or, or walked away, I, 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 I was hearing a lot of like, okay, this is emergency and we need this for emergencies or urgencies. And, um, and we weren't really hitting the, the, the recreational benefits as mm -hmm. much as we should have. And so we, I think we need to tweak our, tweak our presentations to the, the audience. If we're, if we're looking at a presentation to the port commission um, or, or, or the ports in the future, or if we're looking to um, approach like the, uh, the state, the National Guard, um, the emergency management kinds of funding and stuff like that, um, or, to, or to partner with the fire department on emergency things. I think that we need to just Tailor, tailor, and and really hit. Set, think of like what what we can do that would be a good sell to that agency. Yeah. yeah, the, yeah. yeah what's on, what's on the forefront of the presentation and what's on the back on the side back. of the presentation? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You can always have an appendix that says, "We realize it's unlikely to get this amount of money on a pure X only." And so we have, we're going out and looking for partnerships to help uh, in other areas. And if you look at the appendix, you will see some of the other partnerships we're looking at. But tonight we want to talk about how our partnership with you would uh, help us. And I, I think that's a great point. Yeah, yeah uh, and we I, benefit I, Whatcom I, County. Yeah, I, I actually was surprised that Mary led it let off with her part I because that's not the way I saw the slides structured um, unless I missed something uh, so it really uh, because I, I agree with you Mary uh, is that you know parks and rec is looking for parks and rec uh -huh. uh, and I, I think it uh, it should I, I think it should have been mentioned it should have been in there but I don't think it should have been a lead. Well, at the same time, it was the impetus to start this committee. Right. It, it's the history. Yeah. yeah. And I guess well, I didn't. We could have, I, we could have I, done I, that in four sentences. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't necessarily observe the same emphasis, but I get because I thought, we, I mean, we do cover our desires for a recreational duck, but apparently we did not emphasize it strongly enough. Well, Maybe we want to rename ourselves the Recreational Dock Committee, not Public <laughs> Dock Committee. I'm serious, no, because that press that forward. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, let me ask this though: last the meeting itself was a public meeting, correct? Yeah. Yes. Is it recorded? I uh, Chris? No, I asked. Oh. And it was interesting, Greg, but they are not in the practice of recording their their uh, meetings. I think they record it for internal review only because it Is looked that, like, yeah, uh, um, Mike, Michael started a, like a, a personal recorder in the background. Did he? Okay, because I asked if, if it would be recorded and she said no, but I, what, I guess what she meant was not recorded to be shared. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been great to have had it videotaped for us for our benefit. Yeah. I wonder if they like 2020. If they do have an internal recording, I wonder if they'd share. I mean, we were participants when I'm not. pretty sure it's it's only audio. That might even be right. helpful. I, you know, yeah. Learn from our mistakes. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> but but the bottom line, I mean, I think that in the end, it would still frankly surprise me if it is the recreational benefit that, that ends up being a higher proportion of this, I personally believe in the end, it's going to be about access and not necessarily the uh, emergency backup plan. 
I, yeah. I think we'll we'll yeah. get from it what we what we perceive is a major issue. It's being able to have that critical access, um, the urgent access. Uh, that will be uh, the the goal. The side effect would, is the goal. Yeah, it yeah, is they, the goal. Go but at the same time, which is the greater daily use, and that would be the recreational. Mm -hmm. So the greater use being the recreational and the ancillary when those times come, oh, look, here's the benefit to doing it this way. Huh. Yeah. I think we also need to take more time and review our comments that we have received from uh, the public. We, we, we've, we've got a lot of people that are in support, but there are a lot of folks that even though they're in support of the idea, it's not the, the recreational part isn't the isn't the the huge support end. Um, so I, I think that you know I think that we've got that and I've got, I've received a lot more um, feedback so I'm going to put together another um, document that has like just like Lane did with a summary of all of the ferry outage um, comments and I think that when when it comes time to talk to public works that's where we need to we need to push that stuff because that's going to be our chance to, you know, present the other side of the story to public works and to and to the council. Um, while I've been out here, um, I've been thinking about that the, those responses that we've gotten that well from both surveys, mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking that probably a a good thing for us to maybe consider doing is to have take those survey comments and do it almost as a faq question answer question answer uh because a lot of um the questions that i saw on the survey two the the, the boat access survey uh, were things that were either um, uh, misunderstood or just needed a simple answer to. So rather than just have all those questions listed with no response to them, I think would not be as beneficial as having the, the comment and then a an official response back. Hmm. Yeah, kind of like what I did with Ed Scott's initial letter. Whoops. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I did not. Um, we are almost, we're at um, 190, 190 something. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I did pick up, by the way, I picked up another sheet at Islander today. There were five more responses, and I've gotten a, a few more um, on the, the website. But I think that I did not end up, have not responded to the people who asked explicit questions in the surveys yet, because I wanted to know were we, we we're on the agenda for like a meeting on Tuesday night to debrief about this and mm -hmm. I'm talk about what our next steps are. And um, I, I personally think that we'll, we're just going to, you know, have to say we, our next step is really to meet with more people from the community, respond to, to people's concerns, get people's ideas, go through the summer um, with, you know, meeting at Saturday Market and doing workshops and especially meeting with the business people to, to try to get flesh out more and more because we need to come up with some short term goals, I think. I don't, I don't, I think people will just lose attention if we keep talking about just a, a six year old. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I think after the like a meeting, we really should folk concentrate 
on publicizing those comments and a response to each one um, so that people know that we are actually engaged in those comments. I, I got to ask a simple question from a statistical standpoint. We have 190 some uh, based on, you know, having a thousand people, we're looking at 20 percent. Based on that, though, what percentage of uh, that thousand is under the age of 18? Ah, now we start talking voter and adult. And so that 20 percent, maybe 25 or 30. That's what we need to look at, too, is where does that stat actually go from the adult voter taxpayer, yada, yada, yada. We can add uh, we can add a demographic question to any of our surveys going forward. Understand? Um, Do we yeah. have any of that data? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I think we have an assumption, but not data. That's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I can we we can add it to the existing survey and go forward with it on this one and any others. Um, but that. Yeah, you have but, that's a really good point, Greg. But the point is great, that'll give you the demographic of what age group was responding, but it still doesn't tell us how much of our thousand population is in that section that is eliminated. So, what I'm looking at is what's our percentage in relationship to voting adults, tax paying, mm -hmm. land owning, da da da. Well, Lane has some data on that. Um, there's a breakdown on the count, uh, on the island. Our but, sense is this, yeah, it says, yeah. That claims we have 20% of our population is under what under voting age, didn't it? <laughs> Surprisingly. Well, that's surprising. So that's 200. So now you're 190 of of 800, 800. potentially. Yeah. yeah. But in the in the end, though, remember the question we asked wasn't do you want a public dog mm -hmm. the question is are you in favor of us talking to parks and recreation mm -hmm. so I, I think i think that's that's really all we can say so far so we definitely next time we do a survey but we i just feel real strongly that we've got to be meeting people in person and getting a um ways of really soliciting some active input again we cannot keep going forward with only six people right we're going to have to have more um, folks, but mm -hmm. um, so at some point before we wrap up tonight, I think we just want to sit down and decide what is our response to the Leica for the Leica meeting. What do we want to say? Well, let's get to setting that agenda right now. We we've been given what Terry has said to do, so in my mind, that's a no brainer. Let's get that letter crafted, and so we can get it sent out to Saptal, and then uh, also connecting with John Hutchings getting him together with Mike, uh, as they've asked, as Mike said, he's willing to do. I'm happy to give John a call. I I know him and, and uh, have good rapport. Be happy to do that just via phone call. I, I suppose we ought to put it in email too. Uh, Record copies. But I don't know Saptal and I don't know, you know, that whole situation there. I know Terry says we'll have success there. So I'm trusting that Terry has some insight that she knows that he'll be open to talking with us. So uh, she told us how to do it. Make sure we mention both her name and Mike's. And uh, then, uh, so shall we get going on that? That's something we need to do. Yeah, but uh, it, was good, it was a good point of, if you're going to have a report at the LICA meeting, which is just coming up, um, that needs to be crafted. As, as well, just something short, sweet, and to the point. And let's go. Let's I think do bottom it. line, we're we're positive. And and there may be a vacancy in the commissioners with Parks and Rec. <laughs> well, they some of you have mentioned. They said that they won't even be there by the time this came to fruition. I don't know who said that, yeah. but one of them did mention it. And Terry said this could be a twenty-year project, easy. So yeah, again, did. it was Peter uh, Coy who was kind of the. Um, I thought the least enthusiastic in, in the sense that he felt like it's too big, it's more than we would want to take on. 
Um, and I, honestly, I can totally agree if it was 100% their, their responsibility. But that's who that was. I'm sorry, Pat, Pat Coy. I, I was referring to Commissioner Estes. <laughs> I don't think we should probably mention any more names. I just realized. Anyway, but the point is, I don't expect to be here. I don't accept the Maybe. proposition that we shouldn't move forward with this project because it's hard. Right. No, I mean, old, okay. you know, there are regulatory we would have quit a long time ago if that was the case, yeah. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we all knew we all knew going into this that this was not an easy project. No. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's an extremely uh, rocky road to um, eliminate rocks. <laughs> But uh, in here, uh, getting back to Greg, it, it, one of you know one of our asks, I think, is we need their expertise to help us navigate through this process. Right? Mm -hmm. We don't even know. I, until the end of that meeting, I didn't even know this open space plan existed. Right? And that is fundamental to our ability to move forward. So I think the fact that they they gave that the thumbs up is a huge win for us mm -hmm. and something we support mm -hmm. at Leica. What I don't know is, and may, Chris, maybe you could ask Terry, Terry about this. You know, they gave it the thumbs up, but are we in fact included in the open plan now? Uh, what's the timing? How is that officially taken care of? Uh, right. And we already know, we know from reading the past plan that there's a history of so we're not asking for something completely outrageous. I mean, <laughs> this fits well within the open space plan as I read it. You guys can form your own opinion, but you saw some of those highlights. Oh, you're uh, absolutely correct. It, it's, a, it's a bigger project, yes, and it will requ require more, you know, more work, work <laughs> and, and other agencies to approve, but uh, uh, it fits within the overall vision of that open space plan. And, and uh, we're called out specifically in the old one yeah. uh, well, as, a, as a consideration item. So, yeah. And the other thing is if you have to like, look at, look at that plan though. So go back uh, six years and six years ago, uh, that was also when parks was just starting to get involved with the quarry, um, mm -hmm. with the Aston Preserve. Mm -hmm. And so you have to like look more than just at, um, at, at the need for a dock on Lummi Island, um, because, you know, Parks is been, has been putting that stuff in. I, I think that that beach ramp thing I think that's Nick. Do you have any idea of when when that went in? That when they rebuilt the stairs, it it doesn't seem like it was all that long ago. But I don't know. I got the water the there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I think that has maybe that was like more than six years ago. I just I don't know. I I've been here long enough now that. I, all kind of blends. Always, it all kind of blends in, yeah. But so you, you do have a one good point, Mary. About uh, one, I did read in the plan, the 2016 plan, that one of the one of the projects was support to the Aston Preserve, mm -hmm. and that actually happened. So what I yes, would like to know it is, did. yeah, is there? Um, there must be like status reports about what was completed relative to that plan. And I didn't see that, but clearly there's been no activity on purchasing grounds for a Lummi Island boat launch. No. Uh, so what does that mean? Does it just carry through to the 2022 plan? No, that, that, uh, does it, 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 this is the perfect opportunity to wrap it. Yeah. You yeah. know, what? who's launching boats? besides Lummi Islanders. We got the Marina and you got Scenic Estates. A couple places you can launch from. Now Scenic Estates is made for Scenic Estates, but the Marina is available to everybody else. Do they want to improve that? Is that their idea of a boat launch? They aren't going to acquire any more new land anywhere. 
they already own this piece of yeah, yeah. property. Mm -hmm. So there's no acquisition cost as far as that goes. There is a do the planning, do the studies, do the construction done. So, yeah. so folks, I want to yeah. encourage us to, yeah, I mean, there's great discussion. <laughs> However, Terry has led us wonderfully in getting to where we're at now, taking the steps. She's given us steps to do. Can I draw our focus towards, let's just get on these things that she said to do, and let's get this done. We're running out of time tonight. Great discussion, but again, let's keep moving forward, and that'll be doing it by fulfilling what Terry tells us to do. <laughs> well, look, we, we do need to we do, do need to know what we're re going to report on the 23rd. That's immediate. That's coming up real I think, quick. I think everything that we just discussed can can kind of summarize yeah. it. You know. Yeah, it can be summarized and presented, you know, bang, 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 done and move on. Yeah. Doesn't need to be long. No. Yeah. You know, we, our next step is to get in front of the county executive. Yeah. That it was a that it was good. It was a good meeting, I think overall. Um Dave's Dave's information that came on out as a result of this is huge. The fact that they already have a plan and it's there letting the public know these things right i think those things are huge we had the meeting we had presentation we got some good guidance it led us to this and our next step is to be in front of the county executive uh, so we want to present a couple of slides at the like meeting or just give it over uh, i think i think if it, it just some bullet points you know, yeah, it just happened. Talked. We we came. We we saw. We talked. We got good answers. We got direction. Yeah, yeah. That's that's all we need. Yeah, I think. There, done. On to the next, next one. Who's doing uh, we, the ladder? We, yeah, we we need somebody to do the bullet points. Oh, to write down the bullet points. To I presume Chris will give the update, right? I don't know. Greg did a pretty good job of it just now. Maybe he could do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're going to be there anyways. Uh, no, no problem. Well, Lane, I'm going to burden you then because you're the, uh, the wonder worker on the computer and you can share a screen and type that down real quick, if you would. There needs to be somebody other than folks that are around that like a board. That's <laughs> You know, I'm happy to, I'm happy to help here. you that. Did we lose Lane? No, I'm just uh, going to share a screen real quickly. Oh. I just, okay. um, was writing notes. But um, here's my. Oh, freezer. My, yeah, it's a free freezer. Anyone <laughs> want to do freezer? <laughs> That's what I really care about. Um, so I got, uh, I saw the next, I uh, have the next three steps here. So I'll just do a quick. Um, I'll do this and send it off on uh, and you're fast Monday to oh, you guys. Um, and I, just, I just will need a link link to the um, this C crops. C it looks like C crops. It's not quite like that. The only other thing I think we'll just say we they reminded us that there are a lot of challenges and we were not surprised to hear that and that we will need probably multi partners and then we were not surprised to hear that. OK, so I'll write up something and send it to you guys. Uh, midday. Excellent. Excellent. And I want to know what your kryptonite is. <laughs> I crypt. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, myself. What? I know that. Own worst enemy. I'm my own worst enemy. Overcommitting. Yeah. yeah. I'm my own worst. I'm my own kryptonite. Mm -hmm. Um. So presentation. So and then there you go. And Lane, make sure you mention the, uh, the the addition to the open space plan act, giving us access to file grants. I think that's right. First step that, to be included in. Uh huh. Yeah, that was a huge positive. If yeah, it actually happens in a timely manner here. Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what really happens with these grants because I noticed also. Um, I think it was also Pat Coy who said he did not think we would qualify for those grants so it's kind of interesting right and so um, there again we have to pick it yeah we have to understand it better 
We can read about these things, but we really need their expertise at navigating through this. You bet. Um, you bet. Okay. Um, what, what I'd like to know is if we're going to go see Sat Paul, what is our ask? We want a recreational dock on Lummy Island. <laughs> and why? Well, we have lots of reasons why. Uh, we, I think you're right. We need to pare it down and uh, mm -hmm. have a really clear message, a sales message, as Greg says. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, and I think the real ask with him is: Do we can we get can we get you know his support and and uh, and in, in, in which agencies make sense for us to work with? His direction. Yeah, yeah. and give and his, his direction. Yeah. And, and, and with those multi-agency cooperations, um, can we fund a project of this scale? I mean, we don't really know what the cost is, but it's not going to be inexpensive. I mean, the I think, yeah, yeah, but I think to, to back the truck up, I think that the first question we are asking is, we do not know if this is feasible. So how do we... How do we determine that and how do we get funds or what agencies would help us determine mm -hmm. if this is even feasible? And is there another way to achieve this that we don't know anything about? Yeah, so I, I think, think I, I beg to differ in one sentence, Lane. This is definitely feasible. Yes. Is there a will to do it? Okay. All right. That's a good point. Okay. It, so it's feasible because it's been done before. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and it's being done across. San Juan Islands, Skagit County. You In know. Whatcom County. Yeah. Is this a feasible solution? Yeah. And and how do we go Project about it? That would actually go forward here in Whatcom County with the county's support. Exactly. Yeah. So if it isn't, then we have to talk about other goals. <laughs> but we right. are not even positive yet. I just cannot tell. Right. Yeah. Okay. I also, I also think that if we are going to go to public works and put meet with John, um, I think that I do think that we perhaps need to like have the fire department in on this as well. Um, somehow, Chris, like uh, either the chief or the fire commissioners, um, because I, I think that to me, like the huge problem is, is that is the lack of the lack of egress and ingress to the island when the ferry is not running. That, that, that is something that's really important. And the way that they have been doing it, it's, it, it works, but it doesn't always work. And in a timely manner. In a timely manner. And even like even a two hour outage on a workday morning, on a Monday morning, the impacts that that hit people on March the March the I guess it was a Tuesday morning, but the impacts that hit people on March the eighth were kind of really tough for a lot of folks. And I that is just something that even a two hour one is bad, a six hour one is worse, an overnight one is terrible. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the island has been lucky that someone hasn't died because the ferry was not running. So Mary, they have been uh, informed, asked, and they are putting together uh, letters of support for the public dock. 
And in mm -hmm. regards to their work with Public Works already, they've already emphasized with John and all the powers that be what their desire would be. Nice thing is one of the uh, employees of Public Works lost $400 due to that last two hour outing. So we have support from people who are financially getting spanked even on a two hour mm -hmm. one, lost $400. Yeah. So it, yeah. we've got their support already and they will be, yeah, they already have made contact. They've already had conversations. All of that is definitely in place. And Michael is working on, our chief is working on crafting a letter in support of a public doc. Yeah, I think it would be good for somebody from the fire department to be at that meeting with SAC Paul. You know, I think, I think we need to, open open all i can do is ask one of the chiefs there ask the chief if he's willing to go yeah yeah i know i know but i just think that i think that would be good yeah i i agree mary that's a good idea <clears throat> if you get it's somebody about... from if you get chris or or michael from uh parks and rec if you get john hutchings and you get Michael to go to a meeting and sit down with that, Paul, you're already a win. Hmm. Now it's just a matter of, okay, how do we get this scheduled? How do we start figuring on out the wickets? But you already have a win because you have the key players that he's going to think right off the bat already sitting down with you. Mm -hmm. Good point. All right, so are we, are we working on crafting a letter to Sap Tall right now? Don't look at me. <laughs> I, I would, here's a thought. Can we get a commitment from the other people that were just mentioned and say in the letter to, to him, to Sap Tall, that we, the advisory committee, and these people, um, would love to, you know, coordinate a, a, a conference call. Actually, up front, mention those people. But you have to get their permission first and, the, and the, their willingness to want to be on that. But I think that'd be great. It, it's a great foot in the door to be able to say that up front. I think we should open with a, you know, a very brief, summary or note that we met with Whatcom County Parks and Rec. We had a very productive meeting and it was recommended by Mike, what is it, McFarland? He's, mm -hmm. the, he's the chief commissioner, right? Yeah. Uh, that we set up a meeting with you. No, I think he's the executive he's director. Staff. Of, he's staff. Yeah, I think he's the, he's, he's kind of like the John Hutchings of the Parks Department. Yeah, okay, okay. So it was him, right? He directly said to set up this meeting. So that mm -hmm. goes, I think, goes a long way, right, Greg? I mean, <laughs> we're not well, just... And that's exactly it. You want to use Terry Terry's name on in this? You want to say, we had this meeting, we did this, we've talked with, we ha have these people, and we would like to have a, a conference call to discuss. Boom. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. And then short, sweet, but that 22nd nuclear-powered detonation of look at this and oh by the way there's money available for it and it's in the plans you know slight modification we're already on the playing field oh look hmm. now it's a win for him now on a side always when dealing with politicians is no their marketability in your neighborhood how did he do election wise on Lummi Island. Hmm. You know, wins for politicians always get their attention. You know, <laughs> what have you done for Lummi Island? See, it, it's a rude way of putting it, but, and you don't craft that way, but you basically, you know, it, it's alluded to that, hey, we're out here on Lummi Island and, you know, be nice to be able to have your participation on out here. And we have a very high voter turnout. Yes, we do. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, 
if we can if we could get a, a quickie from John and from uh, Michael um, so that we know in advance that yes, they would be wanting to participate. And then you want to CC this on over to, uh, well, you want to send it on out CC to all of them and anybody who is a potential player in this one and Terry Terry. So, so Terry gave us direction to set up meetings separate for whatever reason at this point. Okay. So I hear you guys trying to bring them all together, but so far she hasn't let us astray. So she said, Michael and John and us was sap tall. Hey, here's okay. something we might be able to use. I'll just throw this out there and I'd like your comments, Greg. So one of the, um, one of the things that I read about the, um, and I can't remember the long winded name of this, right? But remember I sent you guys the article from Boat US, which is an advocacy group in Washington for recreational yeah. motors, right? And the, the, the gist of the article was, uh, you know, uh, recreational boating is part of infrastructure, the infrastructure, mm -hmm. right? And the, um, this long-winded program <laughs> was due to expire at the end of last year. And there was, it was included in the infrastructure bill. What I couldn't confirm by looking at uh, Senate records and all is, was it actually part of the final bill that got approved? Uh, but it was one of the sponsors in the Senate was Senator Maria Cantwell. And maybe we ought to name drop that. <laughs> uh, uh, because she knows the value of recreational boating to Washington state residents, right? Uh, any comments on that? Does it make any sense? I think it's a good idea. It's always a good idea uh, if you've got to, to elicit, um, to, to bring up the name of somebody else that, that has, has had prior support for these kind of things. So it makes, yeah. it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it, this, is, this, is, this is a national support as a in part of a, a major, major, you know, uh, legislation, right? The infrastructure package. So, uh, but it might, it might not be, it might not, might not be something that needs to be in the initial. We want to yeah. set up a meeting thing, right? Because uh, you don't want, you don't want that ask for the meeting to be too convoluted, too, too um, detail packed. Uh, yeah. you, you just want it, you want it a quick and dirty, you know, here's what we're looking for. We've been advised, we've been recommended, um, and then get it set up. And then in the actual meeting, you can bring up these kind of things. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, so, um, John Hutchings does not have an H in his name. He spells his name J-O-N. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, thank you, John, without an H. Okay. So, yeah, we can say, I, I would just, as you see here, I was kind of fudging enough just to say that we're, we're scheduling meetings to meet with them. Um, uh, and I'll spell that out. Okay. Um, outlines, chat, chat, chat. Um, Our next uh, the commission. Um, I I'm always not one to push the point that a project is complex. Right. Um, <laughs> okay. Scope. Yeah. It, it it's it, it sort of boils down to that if you ask for permission, the immediate answer is no. Well, <laughs> if you if you give them the well, it's complex. You, you're basically feeding feeding the fire for them to say no. I'd rather just talk about the scope. And we want to mention the fact that we once had this dock on Lummi Island, and it's been removed, and we're here to try and replace it. I mean, <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> I mean, it's a good and point, right? They took it away from us. 
Yeah. Well, but that was the old ferry terminal. I well, that was, we're still treated but, like a but but once the new ferry terminal it, was built, it was a it was a it was an asset. It was a right, it was used not for the ferry, uh -huh. but for recreation or access, and it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, and there were big boats that did tie up to that dock. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You have to be a little bit, if you want to be wildly accurate, it is true. The county bought it in 1924 to be the ferry terminal. Yeah. It was yeah. used mm -hmm. for the ferry terminal for low those many years. Yeah. At times, it would appear that public had use of it. But I cannot right. say that you would have referred to it as a you know fishing dock for the people of Lummi. Right. Right. So I think you want to just be a little, there was certainly a dock here, and I think we could say that. <laughs> uh, Lay, so your interesting point you just said, so you're saying that the county purchased that dock to use for the ferry? The, so the dock was there, it had been built by the, the beach store people, and it was used for private ferries and um, tour boats and schooners taking uh, supplies back and forth to Bellingham and such. So, and then... In 1924, the county bought it, both both Lummy and Gooseberry. Okay, so so historically, it has been in use that that years since that 1910. Space, yeah, that space has been used historically. You bet for a dock for yes. that many years. Yeah, that would be an interesting way to yeah phrase that. And the question is, so when was the new ferry dock completed? Well, the point was, Dave, it was completed and then not actually usable for a while because there were issues with the mechanism they designed it with. So they, oh. for about for several years, they had to continue using the original ferry dock. So they had oh, okay. dual use. Okay, um, so the root of my question was once the ferry was no longer using the old ferry dock. Yeah. How many years was it there before it was taken down by the county? So or officially, the real ferry, the replacement should have been in about 74. And it was used, though, until like through 75, 76 or so, something like that, maybe even 77. Um, okay. And then when everything was resolved at the, quote, new ferry terminal, this was no longer used by the county. So for... So from then until about 1985-ish, when it was taken down. So for several years, it was available to the Lummi Island residents. Yeah. And I, Lummi... I can't tell you, I can't tell you if they just had open door policy that said, you know, be my guest, come on down, we're yeah, happy right. to see you. <laughs> Maybe it was off limits or something, I don't Possibly. know. Possibly. Yeah. Uh, but historically speaking, there was a dock there. Yeah, I think if we, if we just, uh, it's sort of the Mike, uh, Mark Twain thing. Um, it's not necessarily what you say, it's sometimes it's what you don't say. Uh, but if we could just say historically, you know, there was a, do a dock there dating back to Humpty Bump. Um, yeah. And if they want to figure out whether it was public use or, or what, then they can go dig into it. But you can, it, it'd be good to mention historically that it's, yeah, you know, it started there way, way before the ferry did. Yeah. Yes. And um, not not get into the nitty gritty details of, you know. Right. Um, I mean, we might even want to phrase this that our goal is to replace the former dock. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, because then you're going back to what was there, and we want something that's different, that's sustainable, that. Yeah. You know, yeah, a little yeah. different, similar, but different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, I agree. That, yeah. Uh, perhaps the, a good word is revitalize. Uh, yeah, except... that's an idea. And and it is a, um, if we want to, hang on a second, revitalize um, the uh, access to the waterfront. Waterways, I think, was what our term. Da, da, da. Um, and the, um, the fact that the proposed site is historically valid. Well, I was just going to say it is currently um, 
uh, I, I, not all, well, proposed by the, of the doc is, um, op, uh, I'm going to say owned by um, Whatcom County. I mean, it's all in the presentation, but let's assume he, there's a few key things you want to make sure you realize this, this isn't, there is still no purchase. Now, uh, when you there's, talk to DNR about us getting um, the, the doc, uh, Chris, is there is there a cost associated that we lease it? Is that what happens? It's a Tidelands lease. Lease, okay. Are we talking like big money? I have no idea. Okay. And that would be something to investigate. When I talked to the guy on the phone, he said that it depends on what agency they're dealing with, government agency, private entity. Mm -hmm. There's many variables. Uh, once again, he did say it's all doable. Mm -hmm. He says it's a long process. It's not easy process, but he goes, uh, they work all the time with government agencies. And he, he said that is really the best way to go. And you'll have the most success that route. And surely yeah. there was a lease, don't you think, with DNR before with the old doc? Uh, probably not, because I think they started the lease process in more recent years. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. I okay, so the fire chief, positive. I'm jumping in here. The fire chief says, yes, you'd be happy to meet with us. Huh. Yay. Great. With them. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Okie doke. All right. And the other thing is, you know, we've been told by public works that they don't want to have anything to do with a public dock near the ferry dock. But if we brought up the idea of, you know, just building a emergency access public dock that, and because we haven't really even run, run the idea of making that dock a multiple use that could be used for the passenger ferry. We haven't even run that past public works. It also may be just a misunderstanding of what our intentions are. Yeah. Yes. As far as by the ferry dock, they might be thinking that we wanted to do something that was jointly using that same space. Or as opposed to, you know, we're up shore quite a ways. They might not care whatsoever about that. Well, there was that comment about the, the uh, concern about the traffic, um, which doesn't make any sense. But, no. you know, it, it's a concern that was uh, what I understand was voice. And I could but... see that. I could see that being a, a major concern if both ferry and public access were on the same dock. Yes. That, yeah, that would be. Yeah. An issue. But the thing is, like, their public works also owns that that land that's to the north of the ferry dock, and yeah, of the of the parking lot. Could he, yeah, and and that that's closer to the parking lot, and if if somehow it, it, that that would help alleviate the concerns of the traffic and the close neighbors on that other yeah uh, yeah, yeah you're right I, yeah. I, 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 I don't think we ought to you know I, I think it would be good to go into this with a let's really you know think about it as a benefit how can we get the most bang for our buck to benefit the community yeah, it, it, it's an interesting idea, Mary, because uh, they they own the they own the tide lands mm -hmm. um, out from where the overflow mm -hmm. dock is, and mm -hmm. they own the tide lands from where that next parcel is that sits next to that house as you go north. So mm -hmm. there is a huge par parcel there, and yeah, it is. I mean, if we could get. Yeah, but I think that's a coordination issue this, that that the commissioner is best at, at making happen. But it is possible that, yeah, it, having the actual dock itself come out from that 
county property where the dot where the parking is already at but angling up towards where the park and rec stuff is might be a, a good consideration but we're, we're not to that point yet um uh, we we just really got to the we've got to get to the point where we've got the players talking to everybody. Let, let yeah. Me, let me synopsize real quick the email and go back to that focus. Ultimately, you want a meeting with Sat Paul. Ultimately, what outcome do you want? He is going to sprinkle his you know blessing on uh, coordination with his departments, cross-coordination. Is he going to do anything himself? And the answer is basically no. He's going to say, yes, this is a great idea. You guys coordinate it and do it and bring it back. Bring it to the council as a whole. We need the blessing. Yes. That's all you're after. I think we want the blessing and we want a uh, commitment. We want a commitment such that we can apply for a grant to do the planning that's required to define this project, right? Mm -hmm. we, yeah. need, we need one or more or all of his agencies <laughs> to prepare a grant proposal, right? Uh, well, mm -hmm. first, a plan, you have to do the plan, right? And that allows us to then, once that plan gets accepted, we can file grant after grant for the next six years, right? So yeah. I think that's what we really want, right? We want to start the formal process of applying for money so that we can define this project and uh, as a first step, right? Yeah. yeah. How, uh, I mean, that's question. a pretty concrete ask. And if he says no, then we're done, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we, we move on to plan. Yeah. Okay, why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I have another not to not to not to throw a curveball in this, but I wanted your opinion because after reading in that open space plan, you know this 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 goal of it actually said acquiring property for a public boat launch. I do know that as part of the arrangement with the county with Aston, I think they gave them four hundred thousand dollars. Mary, uh, there is something like that. Yes. There is an easement on the Aston property for recreational activities. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> um, you know, I'm not saying we divert from our goal here of putting the dock where it is, but if, if Public Works still has heartburn with the dock in that location, most launch ramps have a dock attached to them, right? Uh, Easton has tons of space where you could launch boats, park trailers. I know it's not the goal of the Heritage Trust, <laughs> but uh, I'm just saying that uh, maybe that's something that we keep in our hip pocket to discuss as an alternative if, if we come up against a huge roadblock with uh, public works. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I'm all for options. It's, you know, it's not as convenient. It's not as close to the dock at Gooseberry, but it's a protected cove. It's closer to Bellingham. We've talked about issues when the weather's bad, you know, or if Lummi Nation has issues with us docking over there, you, know, you could run to Bellingham from there. So Yeah, the, the, the only problem with it is uh, you wouldn't, <clears throat> you can't, I don't, you can't go down the route with a boat launch at Aston, yeah, it, it, that I don't see ever happening. Um, Heritage Trust would not, that's, that's not in their view of that property. I understand, um, but they agreed with Whatcom County that there's a well, recreational easement on that property. But that, yeah. I think what, uh, from what I've understood from her, from my, what talking to Elizabeth on the tours and stuff, that's been more of that there will be buoys out there and that they can <laughs> land small dinghies and stuff. That's not a launch per se, with a ramp and parking and all that stuff. Uh, so, yeah. It, but that's that's a that's a Plan C type of thing in my mind. I, I don't I don't I don't even want to go there right yet. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just putting it out there because yeah. you know, we're talking yeah. about multi agency cooperation here. Right. 
But I, I, I'm surprised that they haven't. I might. I, I don't even know if they're aware that that uh, that the uh, that the current launch property is up for sale. That's a good point. Yeah. Maybe not not try. that it's ideal for what we're talking about because of the urgent urgent access thing, but um, I just wonder if they're even aware that that property has come up for potential yeah. sale. That's a good point. And it's not ideal for emergency access, but it's better than what we have now. If we had a dock there, right? Weather conditions permitting. Well, it's still a goal of Mark and I to do a dock that will lift up out of the water at that current location already. So. That is something we're still working on as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna say I'm 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 liking what I'm seeing Lane working on here. Uh, you, you might want to say, uh, the, this is a thought, the initial proposed site, mm -hmm. uh, to open up that it's not the oh, only, yeah. necessarily okay. the only, because there is that, you know, that question about, you know, the actual uh, public works properties, because they already have a parking lot. Yeah, yeah that's true. Which is actually most of the year underutilized. Mm -hmm. And and it's not the U.S. It's it's not. Oh, it's not. It's, it's Washington State. No, it's the Washington State oh, okay. Department of Natural Resources. We have a lot of other cool buzzwords, but I think, and I, I, was, I, I actually, I, I, I don't know whether to leave this in or take this out. In the meantime, we are, or, or um... well, uh, from what uh, Chris was saying, what Terry Terry was saying, is we want to have this meeting with John and Mike first. Second. Yeah. Before we send this email. Before we send this email to Set Paul? Yeah. Well, I'd say what, once we get a draft of this, let's send it to Terry and get okay. more direction. She responds really fast. Cool. Yeah, we're, we're definitely on her radar. Okay. You know what I would suggest, Lane? I think in that first uh, sentence, first paragraph, uh -huh. um, I think I would specifically state that our, <clears throat> our project goal is is in alignment with the comprehensive parks recreation. Oh, oh, oh. Mm, good right? point. Of yeah, 19, of, of 2016. 2016, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And in fact, the commissioners are in support of including it in the 2022 plan. But we'd have to make sure that the commissioners allow, you know. Yeah, I'm trying to take. think. I, I think I'd be a little, uh, I think I'll probably want to be careful. Yeah, seems to be. Lane, not, no, it does not seem to be. It, it no, is. You said, Alignment. but it does not say doc. That that what you what you read, what you highlighted. Tell me again what you highlighted. Well, we can go through the verbiage, but it, you know the access yeah. to uh, salt water. You know, I'll send you the word doc. Yeah, I think in keeping with. I just think we want to. Yeah, um, in keeping with is good phrasing. That's good. Something a little. You know, the, the I Lummi, I, Lummi Island water access, water access for Lummi Island was, uh, was, was called out for in the 2016 plan. Mm -hmm. But I would get rid of, this, rid of the squishy words like seems to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, We're a committee. So. We know what we Positive. want. We have a specific ask. We know what we want, but I can't <laughs> say that the open. Uh, and we want it now. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> no, we're not going to get it now. <laughs> now now is relative. In two years, we have a 100-year centennial celebration of how long the county's owned it. You're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not everyone agreed it was in keeping with, let's put it that way. And since some commissioners said expressly they didn't think it was, I think we would avoid, um, I think we, I think we, we believe it to be. Uh, yeah, maybe you want to separate it from the meeting then, right? Mm -hmm. I would just make a separate line and say our goal is in keeping. It, it, I mean, we can cite specifics. Yeah, our our plan is in keeping to get rid of the seams. All right. And we say EG and we cut and paste right out of the plan. And I, I can tell you what the sentences need to be. <laughs> yeah, you're I, sure. I, I, like I say, what I looked at, all I saw was the um, Dave to provide. Here it is. Develop a mixture of salt and freshwater, non-motorized and power boat access opportunities, especially including additional sites and improvements to existing properties on Drayton Harbor, Lummy Island, Birch and Bellingham Bay, blah, blah, blah. There it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll that, put that's, that. the, that's the power paragraph. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I want this done. <laughs> and we have ample reasons to believe it's in the plan. <laughs> well, I have ample reasons. We we can show it is. Yeah, in the plan. yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're we're not puffing spoke here. No. <laughs> okay. So I'll play with this when we wake up and I'm fresh in the morning. I'll play with this a little bit more and send it to everybody and Terry. Um, and I will, I will, right after we're done, I'll send you yes, guys you send the link and then I'll have, yes. And then the I can word document. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The link and, uh, just split out that paragraph for her too. Yeah. I'll send exactly what I showed you guys with those things highlighted. So yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. When you draft it up lane, we can review and maybe even make it more strong. <laughs> Wait, you guys. You guys should scan through that that open space document. It's very comprehensive, and there's a lot of good material in there. Uh, there interestingly enough, there was a, also part of the polling was there are numerous creative ways that the um, county tries to raise money for these projects. Some of them are called something like local area motor vehicle tax, local area fuel tax, you know, in an effort to raise money, and of course. In the polling, all of those get negative, <laughs> negative reviews. <laughs> well, but part of it is, is they don't necessarily understand, and I'm not saying this is the case, is that 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 there's there that might have they might have been talking about local money and, and allocations that were already available rather mm. than being new ones. That's why polls are so important to be carefully crafted. Yeah. So you're presenting the right perception good point yeah yeah <laughs> anyway unless somebody else has anything major from me um i would like to run my uh, they're working on dinner downstairs here and uh, mary i will be um around after dinner to handle getting this video up <laughs> cool I'll I'll give it to you. To the refrigerator. thanks Alex. <laughs> thanks all we'll look forward to uh seeing that draft and get it off to Terry and go from there, folks. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. And we'll see you Wednesday night. Lord willing, the crick don't rise. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Great work. <laughs>